In this sponsored podcast and video, I'm chatting with Gareth Stoby from ETFSA uh, around a new actively managed ETF that they are listing in the weeks ahead, a balanced foundation actively managed. Uh, Gareth, appreciate the time. So, I mean, giant news, and we will dig into the details and the events and everything around it. I suppose first call I want to touch on, it's actively managed. We've seen a bunch of these coming to the market recently, but actually there's some reasons mechanically in the background why it's not a traditional sort of passive ETF. Yes, well, I think if you look at um, how balanced, you know, what what is a balanced fund? Um, uh, you know, this new ETF that we bring to market is a balanced fund, and a balanced fund is inherently a fund that inclu- includes different types of, of asset classes. You have growth asset classes that you include, so equities. In this case, we have local equities and offshore equities, and you'd also include uh, listed property. And you have defensive asset classes, so bonds, uh, cash, and and the like. So uh, most balanced fund mandates will will have a particular timeline or a particular uh, duration or goal in mind. And we'll then dial those growth and defensive asset classes accordingly to 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 obviously meet that that outcome. When you put a balanced fund together, it's very difficult to put all of that into one set of rules or one one index uh, design. Um, so in the old days, before active ETF legislation was around, all ETFs had to follow a particular index, and that yeah. meant that uh, having uh, balanced funds was quite difficult because building an index that encapsulated everything that's going on in a balanced fund was, um, you know, uh, um, inherently difficult. With active legislation, it means that managers such as ourselves, we can balance those asset classes, um, you know, day to day as we get new cash into the portfolios and as we need to make changes to the asset allocation uh, through time. So that's the only active component, if you will. Uh, in the main, this is going to be a long-term strategic allocation where we use, importantly, indexes to implement the design. So we have you know, different allocations to the different uh, equity uh, indices and so forth. Yeah, so you're not actually out there sort of trading and making a call. It's just the, the process behind it. And you mentioned that that balanced foundation, 30% SA equity, 5% SA property, 25% SA bonds, uh, 35% foreign equity, and then 5% cash. It is kind of like that. It, it's your core portfolio. This is what would sit, as it says in the, the name, uh, uh, balanced foundation. It, w- it would sit at the core of, of, of any portfolio. And then we could add sort of satellite strategic decisions around it. Yes, I think, you know, there are really two, two use cases. The, the, the first use case is for uh, clients who are perhaps new to investing, new to financial markets, aren't quite sure where to start, um, the kind of if and not uh, use app. But know that this is a but but they what they have established is that they want to invest for the long term, and they want to be uh, well diversified. So for those investors, uh, and let's say they have just ten thousand rand, they can simply buy this one ETF and be immediately diversified across all of the major um, asset classes. Uh, or for more sophisticated investors, you know people like yourself, Simon Hu. Who, who invested broadly across the market and different niches of the market have interests not just in the ETF part of the market, but single stocks, single securities, perhaps commodities and so forth. There, the, the, it's not an if and doubt client, it's a core and explore client where at, at the core of your portfolio, you want a multi-asset solution that is just chugging along, giving you reliable, consistent returns. Um, and then by all means, buy some NVIDIA stock or or Tesla shares and or other things that excite you about yeah. global financial markets and, and build out a more kind of comprehensive portfolio strategy if that's, you know, um, how you'd like like to do things. So there are really two use cases. And, and in both instances, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a core or a foundational type, type of product. And we won't actually be um, tinkering with the asset allocation too much. We, we actually want our users to know pretty reliably what the allocation is to say government bonds through time or SA equity through time so that they can work with that product and work around it and so forth.
Gotcha. And, and for example, with the SA equity, 30%. I mean, are you going to go and buy shares? Will you just buy a, a, top, four, a top 40 or a top 50 uh, ETF and essentially plug that in? So, I mean, as you know, ETFSA has been a, a, a major um, ambassador for the whole ETF market. We've been promoting the use of ETFs. Um, I mean, it's, it's how the, the, the firm came into to existence. So we will be using ETFs a lot to implement the, the portfolio uh, design, but not exclusively. In fact, the, the fund is set up as a fund in security, so we can't, we're not allowed to invest just in other ETFs. So the majority of the portfolio will be invested in other ETFs to give us the asset allocation uh, uh, requirements. So things like property, we'll just simply buy an ETF that represents yeah. the property uh, uh, market. But in other cases, we buy what other notes or other securities to give us that index uh, allocation that we're looking for. So it's still passive, it's still low cost, it's still index orientated, but it might not always be represented in an, in, a, in an ETF. It could be a note, it could be a segregated mandate and so forth. But by and large, we, 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 we're focusing on other ETFs to, to give us the, the index exposure. So on the SA equity allocation, just to answer your specific question there, we're using um, a Satrix ETF or two to give us that component, um, whereas other other building blocks we're using um, other providers. The global part, which is uh, uh, foreign equities around 35%, I mean, that is going to be much like we see with any global dominated by the U.S., but we'll have the rest of the world as well. The U.S. is usually, what, around 60% of, 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 of global. Yeah, it's, it's actually, yeah. it's drifted up. It's uh, closing in on wow. 70% Nvidia. these days. Um, yeah, with, you know, the way that, uh, you know, there's been a disproportionate, um, you know, run in U.S. markets relative to most other global markets over the last uh, decade or so. Um, but yes, it's, it's, it's benchmarked against the ACWI index, which is all country world index. That includes both developed markets and, and emerging markets. So you're completely diversified across all global uh, stock markets for, for the global equity uh, uh, component. And thankfully there too, um, you know, there are a number of instruments and funds already available in our market that give us access to that product. Yeah. So what, we sim what we're simply doing now is moving from these single building block products that are available, have, have been available for some time, and, and putting a solution around it and saying, well, what is an optimal balance um, of these different indices, of these different ETFs to provide, you know, long-term five-year plus, you know, time timeline. Um, and that's really... Yeah, what, what we what we achieving? Looking at the makeup, I mean, two questions here. Can this go into a tax-free account, and is it Reg Twenty Eight compliant? Yes, yeah, yes, and yes. So um, ETFs that are collective investment schemes um, and that don't have performance fees can form part of a tax-free savings account. So that's a perfect use case, actually. Um, you know, if you've got yeah. you know thousand rand a month going off as a debit order in a tax-free savings account, you know, before you would have to pick, say, I don't know, just the top 40 ETF or just the S&P 500 ETF, what have you. Now you can buy one ETF with that thousand rand a month that's, again, fully uh, fully diversified. So it's a good good use case for that. And um, the genesis of the strategy, Simon, was actually from our retirement annuity fund that we run at ETFSA, where um, all the way back in 2019, um, our, our trustees um, asked us to build a default portfolio in line with the thinking from National Treasury around having a very simple, low-cost, passive portfolio uh, for for clients. And in-house, we called it the default portfolio. It was this very simple design. Yeah. But it was Reg 28. It was Reg 28 compliant, um, so it could form part of an RA. Um, it was, you know. Uh, in this instance, it's a high equity product, meaning that it sits in that CSA category that can go all the way up to 75% in, in growth assets. So yes, it's Reg 28 compliant, and one of the key use cases actually is the um, yeah is the compliance with with pension fund regulation. What would be I mean, what sort of total expense ratio are you are you targeting? So the the fund. Um, Clearly, everything in the ETF market, there's a lot of cost consciousness out there, and, and, <laughs> and we're aware of that um, too. Um, so we, we're targeting a total expense ratio of just over 50 basis points. Um, 
And that in, that's our management fee plus where we've used other ETFs to deliver the solution that includes those ETF fees as well. So the 50 basis points is an all-in TR for, 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 the, for the solution of call it just over half a percent. To put that into context, you know, most balanced funds in the, in the market are, you know, well over a, a, a percent. Yeah. So like everything to do with the ETF market, you are getting a structural cost benefit um, to using a product like this. And, and you save that, say, half a percent every year compounded, which makes a big difference uh, through time. Yeah. I, I, and I want to come to the listing process in a moment. The code is ETFSAB. The full name is the ETFSA Balanced Foundation Prescient AMEFT. The a AM stands for Actively Managed. Prescient, I mean, as I understand, they're essentially just the manco in, in this process. Uh, Champion the active um, ETF yeah. landscape for, for white label uh, providers. They, they have been a white label provider in the CIS world for some time. And have got the infrastructure, the licenses, the middle office, the back office to to run portfolios of the sort to work with the JSC to have them listed and so, and that. Our role is one where we are the asset manager um, of the portfolio, and we have certain namings and and distribution rights to do with the portfolio as well. But it's very much uh, almost a joint venture between ourselves and 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 Prescient, and um, you know I, I think they're a solid uh, provider within that space. Yeah, no, I mean, as you say, they, they're well known in the sort of white label collective investment scheme and, and they're bringing a, a lot of uh, active ETFs to market and, uh, as we speak. Uh, the yeah. listing process, so it's coming to market, uh, ETFSAB is the code, as I said, uh, on the JSC, so we can buy it in any of our JSC allied uh, accounts. Listing we, next Monday, 26th of August, but you're doing a listing slightly different, not a traditional IPO. Uh, walk me through the details here. Yeah, so it's it's not a traditional IPO where clients have to fill in forms. Yes, I'm interested in this. Please, can mm -hmm. I have an allotment, et cetera, et cetera, which not only is, to be honest, a bit of a hassle for clients, but it's a terrible hassle for the stockbrokers who are collecting <laughs> all those different application yeah. forms as well. I, I can tell you from, from experience. So um, Prescient has come up with a neat design wherein um, during the first week of the listing, the portfolio will just be a, it'll be a cash portfolio. So if you want to get in at the start of the fund, you basically buy the ETF next week, it'll be listed, but you buy it like you would buy any other, other security. You simply, if you want 100,000 rands worth, you buy 100,000 rands worth and, and you'll get allocated exactly that amount. And we collect all of the interested parties' investment over the course of the first week. And then we actually invest the fund at the end of next week on, on um, Friday the 30th, it is. So that when you wake up on uh, Monday the 2nd of September, the fund is fully invested and then the, the price will start to move on a variable basis depending on you know, how the underlying asset classes and uh, indices are uh, performing. So it's a kind of an on-market um, IPO process, slightly different to the days, days of old. But it just simply means that you click and buy the security on the screen instead of filling in a form as you would have done yeah. in, in previous previous processes. Okay. It's and, quite like and as you, and as you No, I mean I, I quite like it. I mean, so what's it gonna be, I suppose what, ten Rand perhaps, and I can just log on to my, my broker account next week and and buy my allocation at any point from the twenty sixth to the thirtieth, um, at that set price, and then it'll start reflecting the underlying assets from the following Monday the second. So I think uh, from Monday the 26th, it'll be yeah. live. You'll see the share code, share code up and running. And if you're struggling to remember that share code, Simon, we, our, our internal joke is we're bringing South African breweries back to market in the sense that it's the ETF, SAB uh, ETF. So if you're struggling to remember it, just remember the SA Breweries uh, product you used to have in your portfolio once upon a time. It, it's the first uh, thing I saw when, when, when I saw the name, it was ETF SAB, and I thought, hey, yeah. SA Breweries <laughs> And yeah, Anheuser Bush has lost. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and then a bunch of events: uh, Cape Town on the sixteenth of September, Joburg, uh, and Webcast on the third of October. Uh, Durban will be eight of October. So taking it around the country, uh, yourself, Mike Narina, uh, sort of heading to different parts of the world and and talking through the product, but also maybe a bit broader as well, just around ETF investing. Yes, I, that that's one hundred percent. I mean, as you know, ETF is say we we win a privileged position where we've got a number of ETF and market veterans who, who work in our management <laughs> team between Mike Marina 
I'm hoping he's slightly less of a veteran, but, but maybe just crack the nod as a veteran. Just talking about ETF investing um, in, in, in general, um, personal finance in general, and then um, linking it up with strategies such as this, answering clients' questions that they might have about ETF investing more generally, personal finance questions more generally. Um, and there's been a lot going on in the ETF market, as you know, Simon, not just our, our ETF, there's been a number of yeah. other listings uh, of late. Markets this year have flown and then fallen back and then flown again. So there's a lot going on just at a, at a stock market level and a lot of interest from clients in terms of you know how they should be managing their affairs. Um, and we'll be trying to tackle as much of that as, as, as possible and, and obviously look forward to having you, you around at one or two of the events as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just one lap.com slash events uh, details and booking will be, will be up soon. Is this, I mean, ETFSA been around, I mean, I forget when, when Mike Brown started it. I mean, well over a decade ago, your first foray into it. Is this, you're going to be bringing more ETFs or is this really a case of you've got your balanced foundation and this is kind of at the core and, and this is really where, where, where the, the sort of the, the, the be all and end all? No, I, th I think we'll see see how we go with this product. Um, we do have one or two other ideas in mind um, of, of further products that we may bring to, to market. But I think what we want to be clear about here is that, you know, part of our value proposition to the market is to be the, the, the research lead and almost a kind of a multi-manager role within the ETF market. Yeah. So we, we critically assess and research all the different ETFs that are coming from all the different providers, Satrix, um, Signia, 10X, OneVest, all the new active products and so forth. And we've been relied upon for, for many, and, and global issues as well, I should add. You know, we run global monies, iShares, Vanguard as well. So, so we, we've for a long time run portfolios for clients based on particular mandates, growth mandates, income mandates, what have you, for clients. And we've provided a, a research role in the market as well. So that, that ability to critically assess all the other ETFs out there um, is an important aspect of what, what we do. This product is not really in competition with those issues. Rather, no. what we're doing, yes, yeah, rather what we're doing here is sort of putting everything into a solution that's more outcomes orientated and demonstrates to the market the types of portfolios that, that, that we are building um, ourselves um, as a brand. So yes, we, we may expand our product set, but we're not going to become a traditional um, ETF issuer, you know, like like the others. Um, I think that space is very well catered for um, from from a lot of very good and, and successful issuers um, in in our market. And as I say, we're even using some of their product as we build this particular solution. So it's it's more of a yeah more of a DFM multi manager sort of offering uh, solutions offering than it is us being an issuer in our in our own right. But yeah, we'll see how we go. And there, there are definitely a couple of other ideas in the kitchen that we, um, you know, looking at. Yeah, I, mean, I take your point. It, it, it is unique. There, there isn't anything out there. And it is that balanced foundation. It, it has a, a clear sort of space within a portfolio and it's distinct from, from the other offerings that are uh, available out there at this point in time. We'll leave it there. It's Gareth Stoby uh, from ETFSA. The ETFSA Balanced Foundation Prescient AM ETF uh, launching in ramp up 26th of August and then finally going proper live on the 2nd September. Share code, really easy. ETFSAB. Gareth, really appreciate the time today. Thank you, Simon, and looking forward to it.